So I'm back with Scott Herrick from x ray Pantone, who's gonna walk through the interface of the Exact and some of the tools that you can bring to your workflow. All right, so first off, um, we have basically three, three versions of this. We have a basic, which is just a kind of a densitometer version of this. It doesn't have the LAB and the spectral engine uh, or spectral data coming out of this. Um, we have a standard instrument, uh, which, uh, and then we have an advanced. Now the real difference between a standard and an advanced is the advanced um, has the capability, which is really cool, um, of having multiple user logins. Um, so, so I can have a Pressman login, I can have an Inkroom login, and I can have a QA login. And you can then go to each, each individual login and you can configure the instrument differently with different settings per login. So then if you log in as the Ink Room, then the Ink Room settings and the icons that he wants and the settings that he wants, well then the instrument will then com completely reconfigure itself to be for what the Ink Room does. So it's a really cool feature um, that the advanced feature has that the, uh, the standard does not. But the other couple of other big um, hitters on here, when you're standard, is used, generally used in a lot of different places, but the advanced is used more in the ink room. So it actually has opacity built into there, so calculations for opacity, uh, whiteness, brightness, and some of the other calculations that are gonna be used more in an ink room. Um, so that's really kind of the, the main differences. Now there's a few other differences in storage and things like that, but that's probably the main differences between a, a standard and an advanced. So my instrument happens to be in an advanced instrument. Um, so, so the next thing I want to kind of show you is the kind of the general layout of the instrument. Uh, so first off, we talked about that this is all touchscreen. There are no buttons on this. Okay. So we have a quick menu, we have an enhanced menu, and then we have your settings icons over here. So if you need to go into the settings, you can take a look and go to diagnostics. And then Diagnostics actually has an info button right here and it will tell you what your instrument is. So if you don't know if you have a standard or advanced, it will tell you simply right there. Um, whether your instrument is actually scan enabled, so it actually has the button that says scan in there, okay? So the Diagnostics is a really good tool to take a look and figure out where your instrument's at, okay? So the rest of the buttons in here are just separate little icons, okay? Think of them as an application like your iPhone has that has different ap applications all running on an instrument. So the bottom down here, you see this kind of a bottom bar right down here. Number one, it tells you that this is connected through a Bluetooth. There's your my battery status, my date and time is on there. And if I push that little arrow, it pulls that air box up and it gives me a bunch of settings down here. So you can change your language, you can essentially uh, turn Bluetooth on and off, you can change your powers and some other things. So that little on up and down button structure is very important because it's used differently in some of the other applications. So I'm gonna just simply go into the single LAB. So if I wanna take an LAB writing, this is where I'm gonna go, okay? Now, if I go back into that arrow, now these screens have changed, okay? So I got those same type of screens I had before, but up front now, I have active functions and I have settings. So the active functions allows me to turn on or turn off different attributes that I want to see in my particular screen. So I can turn on LAB, but I don't want to see LCH, so I can turn that particular off. I can say, oh, I want to look at paper indices. Okay, I can turn that on, and I want to take a look at a opacity, so I can turn that on as well. So we have something new, is actually called uh, brightness index. So that brightener index, you need to have the new firmware, and you need to have the M1 simultaneous mode turned on in order to do that. And it's a calculation that's using kind of like M1, M0, and M2 um, to do some calculations to, to look at the B value to know how much OBAs are in your paper stock. So it's a newer calculation that just got added with this new firmware. Now settings, you can come in here and you can actually um, change what measurement condition. Remember we talked about that earlier. We got the M0, M1, M2, and M3. So you can, can de define whether your densitometers are one way versus your spectral data coming out of the instruments another way. Okay, that's your measurement condition. And you can change your lumen observer, what density status, and several other um, settings that are gonna be set inside of there, okay? So that's where that, that down arrow is. That's a very important uh, function that you need to learn how to use because that's how you set the settings up. Um, anytime you get lost in any of these menu structures, we always have a go home button. So there's that home button that looks like a little home. If you push that, it goes back to the beginning of the main menu, okay? So now from here, this is ready to take an LAB reading. So I can line it up on the patch, I can go down, take a measurement, and there's my LABs, okay? Very simple. Now, let's take and go out of that, and let's go back, and now let's take a look at something called like basic compare. Now, basic compare has one of the big, uh, big features in this, it's called best match, okay? 
Um, our instruments are the first ones that kind of had these type of uh, these functionalities in there. And what it's doing is it's going to be, it's, it's your best match is kind of like your color GPS. It tries to tell the press guy what he needs to do to density to get the LAB correct because there are no such thing as LAB keys on a printing console. There's no such thing, such thing as a Delta E key on a printing console. It's ink on and ink off. So how can the press guy then look at an LAB value and be failing by a three Delta E when he needs to be underneath a two Delta E then what does he need to do with density to get there? Okay, and that's called best match. So, so first thing you gotta do is grab your standard. So I happen to have a standard here. I'm gonna come into here and I'm gonna take a measurement um, and I'm gonna grab that particular standard. Yep, let me get back out of here in just a minute. All right, so we're gonna grab that orange. Okay, so, so it picked that orange and I'm gonna take a look at my standards and I'm gonna go, well, that doesn't, that one happens to be, I think it was uh, 2011 coded. That happens to be that particular color. All right, so I grab the 211 coded and it happens to be nine delta E's away. Okay, I'm running at a density of 129. And what it's basically telling me here on this side says, well, you're at nine delta E, so that's clearly a fail. You're at 130, just shy 130, 129 is telling you if you go down. Um, uh, by almost 26 points, so almost 30 points, then I will then get a 3.7 delta E. So I've cut my delta E almost in thirds by just simply dropping the density almost 30 points. Okay, now this is a, this is kind of an interrupt process. So it takes a few times of another measurement. So if you get this color, you know, down to about one, one zero for density and you take another measurement, it may say, okay, well now you're at 3.5 delta E at 1.0 density. If you go to 0.85 density, I can get you down to one and a half delta E. So, so that's what best match does. Is it's just kind of, it's an iterative process that takes, you know, several measurements and it starts to dial this in and it will try to get the press guy at the right delta E, okay, for the right density. All right, so there's always a point here where there's no return. So if, if the delta E number is the same on both sides and the density numbers are the same at both sides, that essentially means that, you know, and if it's at a failure point, that basically means I can't get there from here. Basically, it's an ink problem. Take the ink out, fix the ink, uh, because you're not gonna be able to get there by simply using density. Now, the other menu structures, are, again, are relatively the same, okay? There's a, uh, an icon that looks like a paper. Anytime you see that, that means measure paper, okay? Best match requires a paper measurement, so I can come in here and take a paper measurement, all right? Um, there's another dots buttons right here, okay? This, this button is referred to of how many, you see all these little teeny buttons down here, these little dots, kind of like an iPhone does. I can scroll from menu to menu, okay? Just by simply moving, just like you do with an iPhone, okay? You know, if you don't want to scroll all the time, you can actually push that dot, dot, dot button right there. And then I can just simply just push on which menu I want to go to. It's just kind of a quick jump to, if you will. So here, I can, again, like this one right here, is just simply looking at my LEB of my standard, the LEB of my measurement, and it gives me delta numbers, including the delta E. Okay, so all of these menu structures work very, very similar. If I'm in the densitometer function, same thing. I can come up here. I can take a measurement. All right. There's four basically four structure menus going on here. I can push that button and I can look at trapping if I want to look at trapping. If I have trapping turned on, um, I can look at all densities. So there's all my density values for that particular orange that I measured. Um, so this is just so all the, the, the icons are all relatively the same in all the menu structures. So once you learn one of the menu structures, you've learned them all. They're all pretty relatively simple. All right. So. In the first beginning startup, the instrument comes into what we call this quick mode. Um, so instead of having a bunch of icons, we have two main ones. One is this basically just an LAB measurement, and the other one is just a straight on density measurement, you, whether you want to turn and measure uh, tone value increases or tone value patch, basically dot or dot gain patches, you can or you don't have to. But this is a, just a quick measurement way you can go through and measure your black, your cyan, magenta, your yellows, and it will then store those numbers up there so they're very easy to simply go back and reference to. Okay? Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Scott, for doing that brief overview. In the next video, we'll talk about some more features and functionality within the exact handheld.